Hello and welcome to the Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'm going to give you an update on my Venus flytrap here. So, I bought this about a year ago now, and when I bought it it was October, so winter was coming and it needed its rest period. So after a few months of having it inside, I then put it on my balcony, because the Venus flytrap has to go for a cold period, because it comes from North America, where you have a colder period in the winter, and then obviously a warm period in summer. It's not tropical, so you can grow it as a house plant for a while, but if you don't give it a cold period, it would eventually stop growing and just kind of die away. So that's why I left it outside. It's mostly hardy. If there's a hard frost, it will kill it, but a light frost is fine as long as the actual... I mean, all the leaves can die off with the frost, that's not a problem. As long as the roots and the, and the tube underneath is completely frost-free, then it should be fine. So I've had it on my balcony all winter. It died back a bit, but it didn't die out back completely. It wasn't looking too bad. And then come spring, I, I left it out all spring and all summer. And only recently has it actually started to really perk up and put much growth on. Because in the spring it lost a lot of its old leaves and old traps. And it hasn't done that well. <clears throat> so I think what the problem was is I've had it outside in the cold over winter, which was the right thing to do. And it's fall of winter. But then when spring and summer came along, because in Scotland it's quite cold in the summer, it didn't get much heat. And over in North America where it comes from, it, they do actually have quite hot summers. Although they have a cool, a quite cold winter, the summers are quite hot. Whereas here in Scotland they're not hot enough. So I think it's really struggled with the low temperatures this year. So um, what I'm going to do now is just have it in the, in the house for maybe a couple more months. And then I'll put it outside later on to give it the cold period, probably November, December time. Because it still needs that cold period. As I say, it wasn't doing very well. The traps were all really small. And then we had a really warm spell um, the end of August and the beginning of September. And during that warm spell, that's when it grew these larger traps here. Such as this one over on this side. So that during that warm spell, it really seemed to perk up. Put on some bigger traps. But since then, it hasn't really been doing much. So that's why I'm going to bring it inside. And I'll set this up on a time lapse so that you can see it growing. And hopefully it will put on a good bit of growth. I'll also give it some really bright grow lamps to really get its energy going. Because I want to make sure it's built up enough energy so it can rest and go dormant for the winter without any, any major problems. So the only thing, other thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take off some of these brown leaves. Because they're no longer of any use and they're just kind of in the way. So I'll just carefully take them off. If they're really tough, I won't bother ripping them off because it might damage the plant. Try and take this, these ones off as well. So what I've been watering the plant with all summer is um, distilled water, which I've been getting from a dehumidifier that I have at home. And that seems to work quite well. I've been quite happy. Um, I I've only fed it once this year, so I'm going to do another feeding in this episode, hopefully. Because um, it hasn't had any... It hasn't really been growing, so that's why I haven't really been feeding it. it hasn't really had any traps to to eat anything with. So I'll give this a feed now once it's warmed up, because it has just come out from outside and it's quite cold. Once it's warmed up enough, I'll give it a feed. And then as I say, I'll put it on a time-lapse video so you can watch it. Um, you'll probably see the, 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 the trap open, uh, clamp close. On the time-lapse, you'll see it eventually open again, and then hopefully lots of new shoots will start coming up with that, with that new nutrients from the feed. So I'll just try and fit it in this trap here because it's one of the larger ones and it's, uh, it's fully formed. All I'm going to feed it with is a, it's a wood louse here. Now the reason I have to use live prey is because there's three trigger hairs on the, on the trap. Only when one of those three hairs has been triggered at least three times will the trap close. The, the reason the plant does that is so that if it, like, a twig falls on it or if it rains, it doesn't close the trap unnecessarily, it only does it when there's an insect in it. And the main reason it needs to be alive is because when it does close, if the animal isn't moving around, it will eventually, it will just open the trap again without digesting it. It needs to know it's definitely got an animal in there. Because I say if it was like rainy or something, and it, did, and it, it actually hit the hairs three times, the trap would close, and then the rain couldn't get inside, so it would then not bother to closing anymore and open again. So that's why you need a live animal. If you put a dead animal in there and you move the hairs yourself so it will close, it won't fully digest it because it's not, it's not constantly being stimulated. So, I said this has been outside for a while in the cold, so I'm not sure how quick it's going to be, but hopefully it'll be quick enough for, uh, to, become, to be seen on camera. So 
There we are. That's it closed around. As I say, as it, as it struggles, it will just close tighter and tighter. Because the more the animal struggles, the more the plant will know that it's definitely got an insect and a meal. <laughs>